Welcome to another Blueprint.io video and today we will talk about ThingSpeak. So let's take a look how we can set up our own channel. To do so we go for channels and my channels and there we can create a new channel. I already created one but let's try a new one. You can give it a name, let's say Blueprint.io T2. You can give a little description what's going on in case you want to make it public and then you can use up to eight channels. So you can activate and deactivate them, give them names like temperature value or humidity like we've seen before. You get a bunch of instructions here what you can do and what you can't. Also about the location, so how to feed in the location that you can show this little map we've seen before. You can link your GitHub, you can link external sites like your blog or your own web page where you publish other data or other kind of visualization or maybe the results from your MATLAB analysis and you can also link your YouTube channel or Vimo or whatever you want. So as soon as you hit save you get your little dashboard created and you can add always more visualization, more little dashboards. So those tabs are new, we haven't seen it before because that's your private view you can check out the public view. We haven't shared anything until now. You have the channel settings. So that's basically what we had before when we created the channel. And then we have the sharing tab where we can share the channel with everyone. So we have a public channel or we can share it only with certain users. So also in case you have a project going on or research community, you could just add those ThingSpeak accounts and share the data with certain persons, quite useful. So we keep it private for the moment. At the end, we have the data import export tab. Very, very useful, very uncommon for applications like this. We can export our data. That's something we checked out before where we could download it as an Excel sheet or whatever, but we can also upload stuff. So we can import data as a CSV file and we can also get a template here. So let's take a look. So there we get a template how to arrange our data. The things we will later know what to do with the data and how to process the data. So you could always rearrange your data within your Excel sheet or your numbers sheet or you could just go for CSV directly and use this format. So as soon as you rearrange your data, exported it as CSV, you can just choose the file here and import it. So that's super, super simple and rare, something that's quite rare that you can just import CSV sheets, which is super useful in case you have some manual measurements you do. Maybe you measure pH or whatever of water and you do all this manually. Or another example, if you're working with agriculture, you're measuring your harvesting. You're measuring your harvest manually, you weight it by hand or driving the tractor on a, on a scale, however you do it, but you can log this data and upload it here. The last and most important tab is the API key. So you can get your API key here. This needs to be used to push the data via an IPA to the channel and you get the API key for readings. So in case you wanna read your data, from another device, maybe on the other end of the world or next to your house, whatever, you can use a different API key. How to write this API requests? You get provided directly here already with the right API key inserted. So you can just copy this and paste it into your code, paste it into your HTTPS, get request, and there you go. In case that's a bit dizzling for you, just check out learn more and you get a bunch of explanations about how to work with those APIs and how to work with all the data types. But in case you work with Node-RED or any other platform like Arduino IDE, you can get just a library where you just hand over the value as a variable to your library or to your dedicated Node-RED ThingSpeak node and the node or the library will handle all this communication. You don't have to worry about it at all. You just paste the API key there. And since I shared now my API key with you, so I can just create a new one and it will be replaced. Even the HTTP GET request was updated with the new API key right down here. So that's basically all about ThingSpeak you need to know for the moment. Make sure to be subscribed for the next video where we will take a look how to integrate ThingSpeak into our Node-RED flow and of course into other projects in the future. So thanks for watching and see you next time.